Hi kids! Welcome back to the National Museum of Racing and Hall of Fame. Last week, we learned about three-year-old thoroughbred racehorses. Do you remember the name of a very famous set of races that three-year-olds run in every year? That's right, it's called the Triple Crown. The Triple Crown is made up of three races, the Kentucky Derby, the Preakness, and the Belmont. Today, we're going to learn about four and five year old racehorses and some of the races they run in throughout the United States. We'll also talk about steeplechase, a different kind of thoroughbred race. A new race for older racehorses is called the Pegasus World Cup. This race is run at Gulfstream Park in Hollandale Beach, Florida. It was first run in 2017 and is open to horses who are four years of age and older. This is Gunrunner. He won this race in 2018 as a five-year-old horse. This was the last race he ran in and won before retiring to Three Chimneys Farm in Kentucky. The Saratoga Race Course in Saratoga Springs, New York also has several races for thoroughbreds older than three. Two of the more well-known races are the Whitney Stakes and the Woodward Stakes. Both of these races are for horses three years and older. Gunrunner won both of these in 2017 as a four-year-old. The Breeders' Cup Classic is another race open to older horses. Out of the last 36 editions of the Classic, 23 were won by four and five year old racehorses. Our friend Gunrunner won in 2017 as a four year old. Cigar won the Breeders' Cup Classic in 1995 as a five year old. Ghost Zapper, seen here winning the 2005 Metropolitan Handicap at Belmont, was undefeated as an older racehorse and also won the Breeders' Cup Classic in record time in 2004. Zenyatta is another famous filly who made waves during the Breeders' Cup in both 2008 and 2009. In 2008, she won the Breeders' Cup Ladies' Classic with jockey Mike Smith. She was racing against other female horses. The next year, she ran in the Breeders' Cup Classic as a five-year-old against a field of all male horses. And guess what? She beat them all. She became the first female to win the Breeders' Cup Classic that year in 2009. The Jockey Club Gold Cup is a race for three-year-old horses and older, run at Belmont Park in New York every year. One of the most famous winners of this race is Kelso. Kelso won the Jockey Club Gold Cup five times, five years right in a row. Can you believe that? He won as a three-year-old in 1960, and then in 1961, 1962, 1963, and 1964, when he was seven years old. Here's a picture of all of Kelso's Gold Cup trophies. Eddie Arcaro was Kelso's jockey in 1960 and 1961 when they won the Gold Cup. Eddie won the Jockey Club Gold Cup a total of 10 times between riding Kelso and other horses. Curlin is a more recent winner of the Jockey Club Gold Cup. Curlin won this race twice, once as a three-year-old in 2007 and once as a four-year-old in 2008 with jockey Robbie Alvarado. Royal Delta, an accomplished older filly, won several stakes races at the age of four and five. Here she is in 2012 as a four-year-old, winning the 2012 Bed May Invitational at Belmont Park. She also won the 2013 Personal Ensign Handicap at Saratoga as a five-year-old. So far in this series, We've only talked about thoroughbred horses who race on dirt or turf tracks, but there's another type of race that thoroughbred horses compete in. This type of race is called steeplechase. Steeplechase is run over two miles or more, so it's longer than most flat races. 
This lengthy course also has several obstacles that the racing horses have to jump over. These obstacles are usually fencing and man-made shrubs. The steeplechase is a bit like the track event hurdling for humans. Here, runners line up and race down a track, leaping over the hurdles in their path, just like the horses jump over the fencing and shrubs. The first one to the finish line wins. We believe the steeplechase started in County Cork, Ireland. Here, all the way back in the 1700s, people would gather at the town's main street for a horse race. This race was a little different to a horse race in a field because there were many more obstacles for a horse to navigate around on a crowded street. The winning horse was the first horse to the steeple, which at the time meant the church because most churches had a steeple on top. So that's where the name steeple chase comes from. And the fencing and shrubbery that horses jump over today represent the obstacles horses encountered on a town's main street. Today, many steeplechase thoroughbreds are trained in Pennsylvania, North Carolina, and Maryland. Some steeplechase horses are trained from a young age for this specific type of race. Other thoroughbreds race on dirt or turf first and then begin to race in steeplechase races. Goodnight Shirt ran in eight races on the flat track before becoming a steeplechaser. He won 12 races and made over a million dollars. Hi everyone, I'm Dervla. I work here at the National Museum of Racing and Hall of Fame, and I'm back and with another craft idea for you to try at home. This week we're going to make uh, paper plate horses. So obviously for this craft, you're going to need a paper plate. Um, I would suggest that if you're going to try this craft, you use one of these paper plates. So you can see it's kind of flat and it's got the ridges around it and not one of these ones that's kind of like a bowl, heavy duty, because you have to punch holes in it. Um, and this one is just a little stiffer, so it's harder uh, to get the hole punch to work through it. So you'll also need a hole punch. You'll need yarn, tape, or a glue stick. Uh, you'll need scissors, and you'll need a pen, a marker, or I have a pencil and you'll need as well something to color in your paper plate with. So I have decided to use paints. So I've used this acrylic paint and then obviously I had my paintbrush and I had a little palette as well. So we'll get started. So to start off, I just painted the whole paper plate. So um, I painted the whole thing this brown color, but you can use any color you want. The next step is to cut the paper plate in half so just kind of eyeball it and start cutting and make sure the plate is 100 percent dry if you are going to use paints otherwise you'll get very messy so when you have your plate cut in half like this it's two halves uh, what you want to do is then cut one of the the halves of the plate so that it's rounded kind of like a nose so i'm going to do that right now And then you can see it's just a little bit rounder and you don't want to throw this part away because this is actually going to become the ear for your horse so you chop off the end of it and then you just trim it a little bit to make it slightly less sharp and then uh, you stick it on right over here so I'm gonna use a little bit of tape and what I'm going to do is just fold it over fold the little piece of tape over so that it becomes double-sided. If you have double-sided tape at home, obviously you don't need to do this part, but I don't have double-sided tape, so I'm just making do. And then you see, he's got a little ear. So the next thing to do is to take this other half of the plate and this one and join them together. So it'll look, whoops, it'll look like this. So again, I'm gonna take some tape and fold it over so that it becomes double-sided. You can take your time with this, it might be tricky, your fingers might get a little stuck, but that's okay. 
I'm going to use the second little piece. Just stick that on here. And what you want to do is you don't want to stick the tape too far over to the edge um, of the paper plate because the next step is to use the hole punch. Uh, so if you put the tape too far over here, then you can't punch holes through the tape. It's just impossible. So then you take your hole punch and you just want to make a few holes along the neck. So it might be a little tricky because of the paint and because there are two paper plates here together, but just make a few, whoops, because this is where you're going to string the yarn through and make the horse's mane. So it depends on how big and bushy of a mane you want to give him, how far down the plate you want to go, but you might need an adult's help with this part just because it is a little tricky because it's two, basically two paper plates stacked on top of each other. And this is why it's uh, important that you don't use one of those uh, heavy duty plates that they're, they might be good for eating picnics off in the summer, but they're not good for making horse head crafts out of. And then it's a little easier when you get down to this part. So I think that's going to be enough holes for me for today. And then what you want to do is take your yarn. Um, and yarn would be the best because it's a little thicker. And then you cut a, whatever length of it you want. Fold it in half so it looks like this. And then you string it through. So string both of those ends through the hole. And then you pull it tight. And if it looks a little long, that's OK. However long you want your horse's mane to be, that's how long it can be. So again, cut off a bit. And then loop it through. And you can use whatever colors you like. I've decided today to go with sort of more natural looking horse colors with the brown and then the sort of golden looking yarn, but you can give your horse whatever kind of crazy color scheme you want, or you can keep it, you know, either bay or black or palomino or gray, just like the real racehorses or other horses you might see when you're out and about. If you yarn strung through the holes, you'll end up with a nice bushy mane looking like this. And then the next step is to draw the horse's face. So I am going to use this Sharpie marker. And as you can see, it's kind of a green color. Uh, and I'm going to draw his eye. If you have googly eyes that you can glue on, that would be great. They'll look fantastic. But otherwise, you can just draw the eye and then you can give him a big smile. So it's not, mine isn't going to look great in terms of the smile because the marker is not coming out too well on the paint. So if you want, you could use a bit of construction paper and stick that on and that would make him his smile pop a bit more. But otherwise, this is what you end up with. A nice, friendly looking paper plate horse.